members and uh, officers, and welcome to this meeting of the full council and the council. Uh, this meeting has been held remotely and also in person, and will be filmed and recorded for live and subsequent broadcast uh, available through the council website. Uh, the council is a data controller under the general data protection regulations and the Data Protection Act 2018. Uh, we broadcast and record council meetings to fulfil our public task obligation to enable members of the public to observe the democratic process. Uh, data collected during the process will be retained in accordance with the council's published policies available through the council website. Members of the council are reminded that they should follow their council's established meeting protocols, including around the use of the chat facility and that comments made in the chat facility are visible to all participants in the meeting which may include members of the public who have also received advice to the meeting. Uh, members, you will have noticed that surplus to the agenda. We have a, a written notice of motion this afternoon, which is uh, being proposed by Councillor Jim Clotterty and Councillor Francesca Brennan. I aim to take that notice of motion uh, after the financial strategy. It will require uh, suspension of standing orders uh, because of the late arrival of the notice of motion and also item what was it, item four in the uh, the agenda the review of political decision making arrangements also requires a suspension of standing orders in order to suspend standing orders it requires a two thirds majority of those present and eligible to vote uh, I would therefore propose that for these consideration of these two items that we suspend standing orders. Is there anybody otherwise minded? Thank you. Thank you, members. Uh, do we have any apologies for today's meeting? I promise we have apologies from Councillor Quinn. Can you make a roll call? Thank you very much. Yes, please. Can the following councillors please indicate if they're present at the meeting? Councillor Armstrong. Present in chamber. Councillor uh, Provost Brennan. I'm sorry, Councillor Brennan. Present remotely. Councillor Brooks. Present in the chamber. Councillor Cassidy. Present in the chamber. Councillor Cockery. Present in chamber. Councillor Crowder. Present remotely. Councillor Curley. Present in chamber. Councillor Daisley. Present in chamber. Councillor Jackson. Present in chamber. Councillor Law. Present in Chamber. Councillor McKay. Present in the Chamber. Councillor McCormick. Present in the Chamber. Councillor McCluskey. Present in the Chamber. Councillor McGuire. Present remotely. Provis McKenzie. Uh, present in the Chamber. Councillor McVeigh. Present in the Chamber. Councillor Moran. Present in the Chamber. Councillor Nelson. In chamber. Councillor Reynolds. Present in chamber. Councillor Robinson. Present in chamber. Councillor Wilson. Present in the chamber. Are there any de declarations of interest? Um, yes. Um, for the purposes of transparency in respect of item seven on the agenda, I wish to declare a connection to the Walt Institution Trust Fund as I am currently registered as a volunteer for the walk. However, I've applied the objective test and do not consider I have an interest to declare because my role is voluntary and not directly related to the matter before the Council today. Thank you, Kirsty. Uh, we now come to the, the minutes of the meetings of our council committees, subcommittees and boards. Uh, for the information of newly elected members, uh, what I will do is I will read out the appropriate meeting and indicate the page in the minute book which, which, to which it refers. I will then ask uh, the convener or the principal councillor who was at that meeting to approve that uh, minute. And then I will ask if there's anybody otherwise minded. And that is the opportunity for you to stand and to voice your concern that the minute might not be correct. Uh, the first one is the appointment panel for the Chief Officer of Mertide Health and Social Care Partnership on the 23rd of March, page 137. Councillor Cockerty. 
Oh, the reverse. Oh, okay. Uh, probably. Right. Then we otherwise might be. The appointment panel for the Chief Officer of Inverdyke County Health and Social Care Partnership on page 138. Councillor Clark, please. I'll move it for a minute, please. Oh, thank you. And the other noise movement. The General Purposes Board on the 13th of April. Uh, Councillor Moran? Provost, I'll move this if you record. Is there any other noise, my dear? Thank you. Uh, Inverdyke Council on the 21st of April, uh, mm -hmm. Councillor Clark. Yeah, I'll move the minutes to record those. Is there any other ones, please? Thank you. In the Clyde Council statutory meeting uh, on the 19th of the, and I would move it that is a, a true minute. Is there any other ones, please? Thank you. The audit committee on the 7th of June, Councillor Nelson. I move this to a true record. Is there any other ones, please? Thank you. Uh, Health and Social Care Committee on the 8th of June, uh, Councillor Jackson. I'll move this to the true record, please. Thank you. Anybody otherwise, my friends? The planning board on the 9th of June, June Council McVeigh. I'll move this to true record, please. Thank you, Council McVeigh. Anybody otherwise? The Education and Communities Committee on the 14th of June, page 174 to 178. Council of Property. I'll move this as a true record, please. Is there anybody otherwise, my friends? Thanks. Uh, General Purposes Board of the 15th of June, page 179. Councillor Moran? Well, I'll move this to record. Thank you. Is there anybody otherwise? The Environment Regeneration Committee on the 16th of June, page 180 to 186. Uh, Councillor McCormick? I'll move this to record, please. Thank you, Councillor McCormick. Anybody otherwise? Thank you. Uh, the Policy and Resources Committee held on the 21st of June, page 187 to 190. Councillor McCabe? Yeah, I move the minutes to the record, please. Thank you, Councillor McCabe. Anybody otherwise minded? The Police and Fire Security Committee held on the 20th of June. Councillor Wilson? I move the minutes to the record, please. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Is there anybody otherwise minded? Thank you. And the Audit Committee uh, held on the 28th of June for the annual accounts. Councillor Nelson? I move the minutes to the record. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Is there any other ones, Mandy? Thank you, members. Uh, item three in the agenda is a financial strategy and a report by the Director of Finance and Government Governments, uh, Alan. Thank you, Provost, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, a number of elected members were at uh, an all member briefing at two o'clock this afternoon where I ran through the a presentation and there was a question and answer session. I wasn't proposing to say too much more regarding this for, for new elected members. This is a six-month report that comes to the council after reviewing the late economic uh, position at a UK and Scottish level, the latest information internally and reviewing the financial models uh, which are maintained by the council. I'm happy to answer any questions. Is there any questions for Mr. Parker regarding the financial strategy? I know we discussed it in length at the, the briefing earlier on. No questions. Anything online? No. Thank you, uh, Mr. Parker. You're off very late this, this year. Thank you very much. Uh, now, we're going to be in the, the, the agenda is the written note of, notice of motion. Uh, Councillor Property, would you like to today? Yeah, thanks, Provost. Mm -hmm. First of all, can I, I thank your, yourself and, and fellow members for allowing this to go forward. And it is unusual, and for new members, it is unusual for, for this type of motion to go forward at such a, a short notice. I think the whole reason for this is, as I'm sure we're all aware, um, we are going into the summer time. And what has actually happened here? We've done a fantastic amount of work, both in the fund summer of fun last year and the Melly Ore Festival this year. I know my group had pressure put, not great pressure put upon the constituents as I'm sure we all had, who are beginning to you know, feel the squeeze um, on the cost of living. And, and what we are discussing is, is how we can best do this. We looked to see um, what was available and what we can do. And we actually thought the best way to do it would be to allow the trade schemes for this summer to be free of charge as well. Um, it is a relatively straightforward process. Um, those who are um, 
older, not older councillors who have been here a long time will know that we already subsidised um, the Inverclyde Leisure Play schemes and it was Council McKay that proposed that a number of years ago. We do know that our play schemes are definitely used and we do know um, what a value in that asset they are for parents at this time of year. And we also know that I hate using the, the word jams just about making it, but really this is who will probably benefit the most about this. It will probably benefit the, the most who maybe who have maybe one or two, maybe even three kids, and who might find it a wee bit tight sending them all to play scheme at one time. So for this year, and it is this year only, we try to find a way in order that we can try and make it free of charge for it and apply. And thanks to our officers as well, they have found a way to do it. It's not painless. We have to find a way to do it, and I recommend the motion to all members in the hope that, similar to the Melly Hora Festival, that for this year anyway, we can give families a wee bit of respite to know that we've had that extra couple of pounds in the pockets. Yes. So I would recommend it to all members, and, and thanks again for allowing it to come forward. Thank you, Councillor Potter. Take Councillor Brennan, would you like to second that motion? Thanks very much, Provost, and thanks, Councillor Colcarty. Now, I'm sure that most of us would agree that summer holidays should be a carefree time for children, that the break for Inverclyde young people should be filled with positive experiences that help them to return to school mentally well, feeling replenished from spending lots of time with friends and having engaged in lots of physical activity. But we know instinctively, anecdotally and ultimately through well-documented evidence gathered by organisations such as the Joseph Rowntree Foundation, that paying for and planning for these summer holiday experiences can put parents under huge pressure. So even aside from the current cost of living crisis, too many families are experiencing incredible financial stress, which only seems to intensify over the holiday period when that safety net is just worn too thin. Cost should simply not be a barrier to young people in Inverclyde accessing play schemes. So with a regret that summer holidays present a challenging time for so many families, I would also hope that my fellow elected members here in Inverclyde don't need representation from professional footballers in order to make the right decision. And that's why I fully support Councillor Clockerty's motion that we agree that no charge be made for universal play schemes operated by Inverclyde Leisure or directed by the directly funded by the Council during school summer holidays 2022 and I'm happy to second that motion here today. Thank you Councillor Brennan. Before I open up for questions and comments can I go to uh, Mr Puckering to perhaps speak about the financial implications of this motion? Thank you Provost. Um, the motion that's put before um, the, the council today, it's very difficult to gauge the an accurate financial cost because obviously it's linked to take up in, in, in which play schemes the, the, the young people will attend. But officers estimate it should be no more than £20,000 and will probably be a, a fair bit less than that. Uh, the proposal from officers um, is that that is funded from the Year of Young Person Legacy earmarked reserve, which again for members is, is a reserve that's carried forward from 21-22. It has a balance of £30,000. So if the full £20,000 was needed, it would leave £10,000 in that earmarked reserve. I'm happy to clarify any matters. Thank you, Mr. Puckering. Uh, is there any comments? Do you want to your light on the I'll do that. The question has been answered. Uh, Councillor Nelson? Thank you. Um, I, I welcome this very much. I think that's, this is a great thing to do. But I'd like to ask the question, when was the decision made to cut the Wims Bay scheme and how much more would it cost to add the Wims Bay scheme to this? Yeah. Mr Buckley, can you help us out? Uh, Ruth? Put your hands up. Um, so this, this is a question similar to asked at the Education and Communities Committee. Um, between Inverpip and Wings Bay, um, we were only able to deliver one one um, play scheme uh, across two villages, and that's in that's in Inverkip. Um, we you know we we've, we've tried to get a geographical uh, distribution across the across the whole way. What I would say is now it would be too late to, to introduce a new play scheme um, and uh, we were already um, 
tight on staffing and then the diff having difficulties to staff the play schemes um, in, because we've got the play schemes in addition to the uh, the childcare that uh, the government are funding. So uh, so for this year, the decision was made to look at it at Invercape only for the two to the two villages. Yeah, you can ask for a second question, how much more would it cost to include the women's pay scheme in this paper? I, I simply wouldn't have access uh, through you, through you, Provost. I simply wouldn't have access to, to that information. But what I would say is practically we, we, we would uh, not be able to deliver that because we wouldn't have the staffing on the ground. It still hasn't answered my question about how financially how much it cost. Speaks are you able to answer that as far as we can, can go with it? Not not at this point in time, no. Is something we can look at in the future or, or going forward to? We we could look forward, and we could look. We could, uh, as part of the the planning for for next year, we could look at the financial implications. But at this point in time, one, I don't have the financial information, and two, pragmatically, it would be difficult to to deliver on it. Thank you. No, no. Chief again. Yeah. For yourself, I promise it's probably worth saying that the the motion has been costed without the wind faith in it, and that without the financial information, the take up the stand that what Ruth is saying is she doesn't have that information. It's not available to her, and even if she did have that information between IL and herself, we wouldn't have the stand to. To, um, to run a place in the women's bay or any other additional share claim, and particularly because we don't want to take up will be in relation to these play schemes now. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moran. Uh, thank you, Paul. Paul uh, I fully endorse this, but uh, the, the, the not the problem, but I don't think it is universal because if you look at the where these um, centres are, okay, I'm just going to Port Lasbo, you've got New Ark. Now, that is at the top of Port Glasgow. There's big spheres of Port Glasgow not even covered here. There's big parts of, I think, Inverclyde not even covered with these. Other children who are living outside where the, the centres are don't have that opportunity to get a centre. You know, so I would think that if it's for every child, then we should look to expand it so every child does get the benefit. Obviously, it's too late this year. But going forward, I would say we have to look at expanding this scheme so all the children in Inverclyde Get the same opportunity, not just the ones who are living to these very popular uh, centres or near schools, but there's an awful lot of children who do not live anywhere near schools or these centres who are not getting the opportunity. So I'd say going forward, uh, we have to look to make sure that every child gets the same chance, not just the chosen few, which will be here. And I can assure you too, as well, because of the health and safety regulations, there'll be uh, set numbers at these centres and if you're up visiting your grandmother who who lives in Burns, Burnhead Street and you live in Lindell Street, you're not allowed to attend because you're not on the list. This is not right. So every child must be taken into consideration, not just the ones who can access these centres. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, Councillor McGuire. Thank you, Provost. Um, yeah, my question was kind of slightly different from other members. Well, so I appreciate the sentiment of of the motion. I was just wondering, by taking it from the uh, the young person funds, is there any other events that we have planned to host, either currently planned or have hosted in the past, will that affect any of their funding? Just because I'm very aware that we tend to do an annual event um, for young people, so it's just to see if maybe whilst these police schemes are welcomed, um, if this will have a future impact on the budget for other young people across the area who maybe don't participate in these play schemes but might participate in other things. Yeah, Provost, um, so the Year of the Young People Fund Legacy Fund was, was indeed looking at, uh, at legacy events. Um, we still have some money left in that fund, so we, we're, we will be able to run the awards ceremony and those types of events. Of course, uh, uh, COVID has meant they haven't run for the last couple of years. What I would say is, is the, the plans that will not run as a result of using the Year of the Young People would have been 
people um, legacy funding will be linked to the types of events that uh, Hugh and his Hugh uh, Scott and his team were taking forward. Um, he had some some ideas in mind that he wanted to co-produce yeah. with the young people, um, particularly around uh, some PB type uh, activities that we would have uh, we would have taken forward over the next couple of years. So so to be clear, it will not be it'll not be uh, will not be able to take those things forward. Thanks, Ms. Big. Okay. Uh, Sorry, for can I come in with a supplementary question to that then? Of course. And, I, and I'm happy to take this offline if need be. Uh, just on that, um, is there not going to be possibly a separate PBA budget going forward? Uh, just just a thought, um, but I'm happy to take it offline. Ms. Wink, could you just speak to Councillor Murphy in due course? Yes, happy to. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Crowder, Councillor Jackson. Thank you, Convener. Um, I'd just like to uh, welcome this motion and also the sentiments that have been expressed by Councillors Nelson and Moran. I was going to use the term uh, whether this would apply universally, but I'll change the, the meaning of universal. And that basically is that within the areas uh, that this motion applies, would that uh, be all-encompassing, i.e. that there is no strings attached or exclusions? Yes, yes. Um, in, in short, uh, what, uh, what we have to, to look at is the, uh, is the amount of young people a, a play scheme can take. And we simply at this point don't know. We have the uh, we have the childcare provision where places are already booked. They they are as all encompassing as the, the targeted places will will allow us to be. Um, but if more young people turn up than we have uh, than we have staffing for, then uh, then we will have to to manage that carefully. But we have done that in the past. Um, we have managed to get every young person to the play schemes. We've got we've got a minibus, and and the the CLD team are very responsive and imaginative. What I would say um, also is that we've worked within the uh, the financial envelope we've had to deliver um, what is a, a very comprehensive uh, summer program for our young people. Um, and uh, whilst we can't get it in every single location, we've tried our best to get it to, uh, across as many of the locations as possible. Um, if the if the play schemes expand, then that will put uh, a budgetary pressure upon upon the service that would need to be managed in some way. Thanks, thanks. Okay, so I'm in that. there and just to ask uh, one more. So the, the play schemes themselves, they're not subject to a uh, means testing in any way. So it will be free of charge. So through, through your provost, yes, the, this will not be subject to means testing in any way. This is different to the targeted um, childcare schemes that have been run by um, through Scottish government funding, which will be targeted to people who meet certain criteria. But the, to be clear, everything will be free. That's very nice, lovely. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Jackson. Thank you. No, this is an ideal the time. Is not ideal. We will accept that. It would be nice to plan ahead and get this sorted. But as local councillors and politicians, we've got to be active. The circumstances, and the circumstances have dictated that we had to do something. Now, in a perfect world, kids would get home February, March, couldn't do these forms and say to their mum, dad, can I attend these play schemes to fill it in and get them in there? But when you're living in poverty and you're in stress, that gets put aside because you've got bills to pay, you've got food to put on the table, you've got clothes, you've got every expense in the world, and it comes to this time, and you just realise that you go to bed provision for the kids for over the summer. And there's absolutely no way in the world that any kid in any kind from some of the purest communities should be sitting at home with their pals that are out for the place. It's just not on. So it's not ideal to get that. But as local councillors and politicians, we have to be reactive. And I apologise if this is put any pressure on people to deliver. And I thank Alan Buckley and his team for finding the funds for this. But I would just say to members, right, it's not ideal that. If we can be reactive, we've got to be reactive. We're there, we get elected in to help the people enter and this is what we're doing. So I welcome the move, I welcome the next funding, and I hope every kid in Enterprise can do it and participate on this. Thanks, Thank you, Councillor Chancellor. Councillor Pullen and Councillor Wilson. I think just to 
think that's a bit uh, bit what Collins just said there. I think it's uh, important that we are reacting to these situations and I welcome the, the measures we brought forward and obviously do it. And I also think it's important that we do look at the play schemes, as as we said by Mike McCall and Ms. Nelson, that there is a concern that the, the decisions are made that maybe that we need to revisit again with respect to, to Rooms Bay. And I think uh, as as Prince Moran also said, this issue with respect to Fort Glasgow, but I think we do need to look at this over as part of the, 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 the our process of looking at how we where we're going to positioning these play schemes. We also want to make sure it's access for all that we have we now have the 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 bus pass scheme that we've got in, in Underplay, which has been very well taken up in Underplay, of course elsewhere and in, in, in Kimpy. So we do have a lot more flexibility where we can actually put these schemes and where and where children can actually get gain access to them. So we need to we're looking at a, a body of work for next year. Let's let's have a, a, a good look at where we can actually put these schemes where most children can get access, utilising the funding that's available through public transport, getting free public transport to needs as well. So I welcome both what uh, Chris Trask said and on and the based by Robert Moran. I think we do need to look careful at this and providing a, a, a good level of, of facility for people uh, for children to use within uh, this summer because we are aware of the cost. If you're if you're at work and you're and you're putting kids who are now usually at school or now no longer school, uh, you need to find something to do. It's something enjoyable to do uh, during the summer holidays. It takes a strain off you as, as parents. So so it's a good thing that we, we have got this funding. We have subsidised in the past and we're doing this this year. But we, I think a, a good written branch report to look at it for next year would be much appreciated. Thank you, Councillor Curley. Councillor O'Neill, like was on again. Yeah, uh, very little. Uh, I think all I'm going to say, I agree totally with Councillor Jackson uh, on his comments, and I agree with Councillor Curley on universality, which was my question. Thank you. Uh, members, there have been. Sorry, Councillor it's, it's just to sum up, can, can I thank all members for, for their input? Um, I don't want to seem like a sackcloth in the ashes, but. I would remind members that we just discussed the financial strategy there as well, where we had a fifteen million pound each year shortfall. So I, I framed this in with regard to the summer of fun and the Valley Mura Festival and just coming out of COVID. And I was very specific in that because I realised what a hard time all of us are going to have around this table when it comes to really tough financial decisions. This decision today. It's no free money, as Alan Pockering says, what we've just done is environment that we've not been able to do some things that, that maybe Hugh would have wanted to do. So I, I understand that. Um, and I would just caution members that as we're going through really tough budgeting times, it's easy because we've all just been re-elected and elected again. And these are the type of things we want to do. We would love to do free summer, summer play schemes for everybody. Um, <laughs> it's just where that comes and all our priorities and moving forward. So I, I don't want to put a down on it right at the end and, and, and summary of it, but I, I just want to try and bring that realising realizing that we've all made tough decisions that we're going to make over this next year. And what I'm trying to do is, is bring a wee bit of summer fun this year um, in order that when we take our hard decisions that we're all going to have, that, that we, we do that with our open eyes. So thank you, Provost, and thank you, members. Thank you, Councillor Flutterty. Uh, members, there seems to be overwhelming support for this, and no uh, amendments have been put forward. Can we therefore approve this notice of motion? Thank you. Uh, item four on the agenda is the review of political decision making arrangements. Uh, Mr. Strickman, please. Thank you, Provost. Uh, thank you, members. So, uh, yeah, the uh, Provost report is to recommend that Council approves a number of changes to the political decision making arrangements. This is further to a report. Uh, table and agreed at the statutory meeting. Uh, happy to take any questions, but I've got nothing else to add at this time. Is there any questions for uh, Mr. Thacken? No. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just uh, want you to know the reason to change the name from the committee to scrutiny panels. You know, is it the new way of thinking? And because we look at the papers, the performance here we've all done before and change the name. So I just watch this the thing behind for a panel that are the commissioner. Thanks, Chancellor. Yeah, really, I mean, as I said earlier in the report, it was more to reflect 
and um, particularly with the uh, Health and Social Care Committee, the changed circumstances now with the delegation to the IJB. Um, and we felt that a sort of a, a reframing, if you like, and we've also, I guess, specifically looked at the delegated functions of the committee, now the panel, uh, reflecting the delegation, reflecting the theory review, the proposals around the National Care Service. Um, and we felt that in terms of expectation management, if you like, the stakeholders and the public actually uh, recognising that a panel we, we felt was a better reflection of what it will now do rather than a committee. And, and we felt for consistency with police and fire also to make them the same, but still including scrutiny in the title for the, you know, the important reasons that that assists. Thank you for that. <laughs> Is there any other questions for Mr. Shakti? Thank you, members. Uh, agenda item number five, the administrative arrangements. Oh, sorry. Two things. Well, I think it's mentioned here that standing orders would need to be suspended for a second. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think I'm in, in agreement with Councillor Anna. I, I don't like the sound of the, the thing panel. I think the committee is sounding for nicely and well. Thank you, members. Uh, number five in the agenda: the administrative the administrative arrangements, uh, cycle of council committees, subcommittees, and board meetings to June 2020. Mr. Franklin, please. Thank you, Provost. Yeah, um, members will also be familiar with this report coming forward as we do uh, normally. Um, the, I'll just make a, a couple of points. Uh, we, uh, first of all, I do mention the report, but uh, we've changed or who's changing the uh, start of the community element of education and communities committee to two o'clock rather than um, one. And also because we knew we were going to have to have a special meeting of the council. Um, at the end of October to uh, consider the annual accounts ordinarily we put special meetings in the, the, the diary but because we know that we thought we might as well just now so that has a, a, a knock on effect to ENR and the last one was um, Councillor Brooks spotted thank you that uh, the licensing board dates were uh, slightly wrong in the uh, appendix and this should be Thursday the 2nd of March instead of the 3rd and Thursday the 1st of June instead of the 2nd of June Okay. So many other questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think Ross, I bring it up But it seems to be it. I'm new on the education and community committee. But my man is certainly right. The reason they brought it forward because it was running too late and the members of the public were sitting out there waiting for the first part to finish. So never revert back to a later date. So it could be we'll have the same situation developing. Where we're still carrying on the communities and the people with for education, especially the church reps and the parent reps, are sitting out in that corner waiting. Now, I don't know, I'm new to it, but at the end of the day, why is it not we be 21 o'clock because of the very problem that we created? So we're, we're, we're going to recreate a problem <coughs> we bring it back to 2 o'clock. Yes, I mean, that, that did come up when uh, we, we discussed this with the SLF, and, and that was the view that we should. We should try that. I think the, the view was that it was perhaps not likely to, to last as long. But you know, if it doesn't work, we can of course look at it again. Thanks, Councillor Wilson. Yeah. Well, can I reassure Councillor Ramy? The reason in the last administration the meetings took so long, a particular member of the last administration, you are one not with us anymore. Reassure you. Never sat in education. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Robson. I won't name names. Uh, can we agree recommendations? Uh, I can remember uh, the definition of Islamophobia, a uh, request by Councillor McCabe after the Muslim engagement and development. Before going to Councillor McCabe, I will ask him and Mr. Strachan to. Uh, thank you, Provost. Yes. Um, all, all I would add is, and we concluded in the public report there, but obviously this proposal is aligned to the Council's quality duties anyway, and uh, this definition has already been taken on board by some other authorities, and we understand others are already looking at it in case that's this. Council, 
Seven is the request to use the Watt Institution Trust Fund for collection improvements at the Watt Institution. Ms. Banks? So, the detail of this is in the report, but this report is asking for £25,000 from the Watt Institution Trust Fund to do two things. The first is to, to improve the archiving facilities, and the second is to recreate the taxidermy collection. Are there any questions, members? Can we agree the recommendations? Uh, number eight is business appendix, and to do to consider that we must uh, go to private session. So I'd ask any members of the public for press to leave and the call on the things can done to the doors. I'm going to say, 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 I'